If you've been a home buyer since 2020 and you haven't bought a home yet, you're probably sitting on the sidelines waiting for the big housing crash. There's been numerous videos on YouTube talking about the impending housing crash, but everybody keeps saying, when? When is it gonna happen? Even including big financial gurus like Susie Orman had said that many homeowners were gonna lose about half their value during the pandemic, and that never happened. Today, I'm gonna be sharing with you some key indicators that I have found that necessarily don't point to a housing crash anytime soon. And I know that's something you don't want to hear as a home buyer, but I, all I can do is be honest with you. Everybody knows at the start of the pandemic, there was a mortgage forbearance. And that mortgage forbearance after the CARES Act was enacted was supposed to end at a specific date. Now the mortgage moratorium isn't going to end until June 30th, 2021. And even then, when people do file that forbearance up to that very last day, they can extend that for another six months meaning that if they don't pay at all during that time, mortgage forbearance ends after that six months, they can still stay in their house because it takes forever for a house to be foreclosed on. It can take months, sometimes even years. Matter of fact, there was a house down the road here that was in foreclosure and it took four years for the bank to put it back on the market after it had been foreclosed on. So if you're expecting a big wave of foreclosures after June 30th of this year, it ain't gonna happen. That's one indication that there is gonna be no crash this year. Uh, in, in our area, what we're seeing is people escaping the big city. And so that's why I don't think, I, I think we may, if the whole country slows down, obviously we will too. But I don't think we're gonna see like we saw in 2008 and nine. Some markets are never gonna go down, in my opinion. You're gonna be looking at places like Austin, Texas, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, Orlando, Florida, Miami, Florida. Those markets, I'm not even too sure they'll ever go down in price and see a wave of foreclosures. And the reason being is there's been lots of tech industries that have left and they've brought those jobs to the big cities. So that being said, of course, the houses have gone up in price. Another thing that has come up in some of these cities is that even though there have been foreclosures that have entered the market, they never quite actually hit the hot market, the MLS. And that's because these corporations have created other uh, entities within their corporation where they're buying up the foreclosed properties and renting those out to their employees. It sucks. And you wanted to buy some of these foreclosed properties, you've been bought out. You've been bought out good because they got deep pockets and they're always going to beat you out. But the Realtors Chief Economist Lawrence Yun notes that now even homes priced between 500000 and a million are starting to see the same low inventory problems. But what about all these other markets that have all this cash? Where is all this cash coming from? Because I know all the real estate agents and local home buyers just love to blame Californians for coming in with their cash to buy these houses. It's investors as well. But why are investors buying so many houses at this high level right now? Well, anybody who knows anything about finances will tell you that the value of the dollar is dropping very quickly. So people want those hard assets. So they're taking the capital that they have earned and instead of investing it in things that are more volatile like the stock market, they're buying hard assets like real estate, gold, and Bitcoin. So that's what's happening. That's where the cash is coming from. It isn't just from California cash buyers. We have to stop blaming the poor Californians. They have money, of course, and they are inflating a lot of housing markets and people love to blame them, but it isn't just them. It's all the people that have deep pockets that are looking for places to invest their money other than the stock market because it's a little vile though. You're going to have to, you can't just, I had some, I keep having conversations with people who are like, oh, you know, it's six months on the housing ground crash. You'll help me. Like you got to start making plan Bs here. Like you can't just wait around for this, especially in this city. Now there is a sector of the housing market that no one's talking about. And they will never mention the fact that these people who live in manufactured homes did not get any kind of mortgage forbearance. And that's because they have something called a chattel loan, which isn't attached to real property. And they rent their piece of land that's underneath their manufactured home in a manufactured home park. Now for investors, that would be a great thing because if they do get foreclosed on, they purchase these properties, they fix them up and they rent them back out. And these manufactured homes would be an income earning profit for them. So again, they get rid of their cash, they invest in real estate and it becomes an income earning property. A win for investors, but a terrible for the regular guy. At the same time, the state saw more interest in home construction as people tried to take advantage of low interest rates. So what happened to all the new homes that we were promised at the beginning of 2021? We were told that the housing market was going to be flooded with a bunch of new houses because the home builders felt more confident about the housing market. 
The biggest problem for home builders right now is they're having the hardest time finding materials. And yeah, look, lumber prices could be at a new record high by the end of the week. Framing lumber is right around $945 right now. That's up over 110%. Homes that would typically cost about $10,000 in lumber to build are now costing twenty dollars and $30,000 in lumber. And of course, that influx in price goes to the home buyer. Even if you are seeing a new flood of homes hitting the market, they're not any less expensive than existing homes, and they're not going down in price. And home builders are not offering incentives like they used to, like closing costs or upgrades. So the market's getting a lot tougher and it's squeezing out the middle class. The, the middle class are going to get priced out permanently. The great divide will get wider and wealthy people are picking up the second and third homes like most people buy Skittles or the way we were buying toilet paper back in March. And it's squeezing out a lot of first time home buyers. Some of the things that home buyers have had to give up as far as getting a house has gotten to be to the point of craziness. And I feel for home buyers right now, but it doesn't look like there's going to be a housing crash anytime soon. This validates this concept I've been telling and pushing on for years, which is cash is trash and the wealthy are turning their cash into real assets. Now, here's some signs that I still think the real estate market is gonna have some trouble in the future. And that is the unemployment. And unemployment rate edged down to 6%. But there is another group of numbers that they're not really focusing on. And that's the amount of people that are no longer on the charts of being unemployed. Once you've been unemployed for six months, they consider that you no longer are looking for work. This woman from the Washington Post actually just tweeted about this and showed the actual hard numbers of the people that you don't actually see on the numbers of unemployment. So on one graph, it looks like it's ticking up, but it's also removing all those people that have been looking for work for over six months. It is something you should be thinking about and looking at in the future, especially if you're trying to time the market for when the crash is supposed to happen. Um, and I certainly want them to have jobs, but overall, at this rate of unemployment, you know, the last time we were here, it didn't have an impact on the housing market at all. I know you've probably read some headlines recently that have stated the fact that there's been a lot less homes that have sold in the last couple months. It's because we don't have the inventory. There still isn't enough homes on the market to satisfy the amount of buyers that everybody has in their bank of people trying to find a home. And even though that may look like, oh, look, there's a crash. See, there isn't enough selling. It's because there isn't enough available. We've been promised and promised that there's gonna be more houses that are entering the market because as more people become vaccinated, they're more likely to have people come in their homes. Another thing to be looking at is a lot of employers during the coronavirus did not go ahead and move their employees to other locations around the country like they normally would in the spring. This is something that a lot of people are looking forward to to see if a lot of more companies are gonna go ahead and make those transfers for employees because that means that they're gonna end up putting their house up for sale. I haven't seen yet in my area. I want to know if you have seen it in yours because it would be great to get some more houses up for sale. But the market is in distress. I mean, buyers have no shot, right? It's not fair for buyers at all right now. And um, sellers, you know, have lived in this kind of idyllic world of real estate for probably the last, boy, five, six years. 20% of homeowners plan to put their home on the market this year. That new survey coming from Coldwell Banker Real Estate. For months now, industry experts have been saying it's a seller's market with more people looking for houses during the pandemic than we're selling. The survey found younger homeowners are the most likely right now to sell. More than half of them say they want to move to an entirely different state. One in five? One in five people are going to be selling their home in 2021. I have yet to see it in my market and we're at the beginning of April. So I know that if you're watching this video, you've probably watched a hundred other housing crash videos on the internet. And I want to know your opinion of what you think is going to happen to the housing market because I don't see it crashing, not this year, not next year, and maybe possibly the year after that. In the meantime, it looks like we're going to be seeing high prices all the way through the summer. If there's any indication that there's going to be anything different, I will make another housing crash video. But don't click on another housing crash video because all they're trying to do is scare you. It isn't gonna happen this year. And I'm not the only one who thinks this. My friend Javier Vendata has done many housing crash videos and his tune has changed as well. You're gonna to wanna to click this video right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer. And I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.